All right, let's try that again. Okay. So today, uh, I'm going to be going over dynamic time referencing in Excel. Um, uh, but I'll give a quick, quick intro to the channel since this is my first stream. So the purpose of this channel, in my opinion, is to provide an open and free-flowing environment uh, to teach software and coding to people and also learn a little bit myself. Um, learning on your own can be challenging, as I've learned. There's a lot of material when you start learning a new language or a new software, and it can be overwhelming as to where to begin with. Uh, there are also formal classes out there, whether it be in school or through third parties, but those take a lot of time and money, and they're not always available where you live. Uh, so I wanted to set this up as a safe and interactive environment where it's completely okay to be wrong. You guys can follow along and just have fun and get people more widely introduced to report automation, uh, starting out in Excel, but expanding as we go. So we'll jump right in. Uh, for dynamic timing in Excel, I want to just give a brief overview of time in Excel as it's envisioned. So time is actually viewed as numbers in Excel. And to show that, I'm going to do equals now, the now function, open, close parentheses, hit enter, and it's going to spit out today, July 21st, 2018. Now visually, we see that as a date, but if you right click and go to format cells, you see it's listed as a date in that. Uh, in the cell, but if you change it to a number and hit OK, you can see it's this weird 43,302.51. So you might be saying what that means. Well, if you, in the cell B1, hit equals, reference cell A1 and add one, you'll notice that I have this set to a date. It outputs as tomorrow, 722. So all this is saying is that Excel sees dates as individual numbers. Every day is one, and as you can see, it can be broken into fractions. 0.51 is a little over half a day, which is where we're at now at 12.11. Um, and you might be wondering also, why is it such a high, weird number? If you actually took, so we'll ignore the uh, fraction of 0.51, but if you took equals 43,302 divided by 365, that's 118 years. Um, with a decimal because of the months and the days. And if you subtract 118 from 2018, it puts you to, it, and if you included the fraction, it would go exactly to January 1st, 1900. So in Excel, time doesn't actually really exist before January 1, 1900 um, in basic Excel. I'm sure there's add-ins that can expand that functionality. Uh, and it actually goes forward as well to January 1st, 10,000. We'll do a quick check of that. You equal one slash one slash ten thousand outputs zero. Um, actually, let's X that over there. Ooh, wrong button. Delete that back over. Uh, let's do it in a date file so make it see it a little easier. One slash one slash ten thousand. Boom. Yeah, it, it gives you this weird the zeroth of January nineteen hundred. So it's just an error. Um. So. Moving on, that's just a little overview of time in Excel. Now we'll actually look at some things you can do in a report. Uh, I sort of have this scaled. We're going to do immediate functions like now and what's happening today. And we're going to work our way to monthly, calendar years, and fiscal years. So for immediate functions, um, the, the most common one you'll see in reporting is now, as I showed you on the other screen, equals now, spits it out. You also notice that you can, for, based on how you format your cells, you can get more specificity with the uh, down to the dates, down to the minutes, uh, even down to the seconds if you want. So this is a custom. It's month, day, year, hours, and minutes. That's the one I like to use typically. Um, and let's see. You can, and then if you in the next cell wanted to just do today, you could do the day function. Open close parentheses, and it's not going to spit out uh, anything. Um, more than the actual day, it just defaults to the date. If you wanted to see more, again, format cells, go to custom, go all the way down, it's month, day, year, hour, minute. Hit OK. When you do a today function, it just uses whole integers, so it just puts it to midnight. Um, I wanted to show that one off because in report referencing, midnight is usually a popular one because midnight to midnight gives you a full day. If you needed more, you could do equals that cell plus 0 0.25. That's a quarter of a day, and it'll give you 6 a.m. I wanted to show that functionality because 
in most businesses, accounting days start from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. I'm not sure why, but they do. So I use that as a simple math uh, equation, just 0 0.25. If you don't want to mess with fractions, there's also a time function, and you can specify hours, minutes, seconds. So if I wanted 6 a.m., I do 6, comma, 0 minutes, comma, 0 seconds, close parentheses, enter, you get the same thing. Uh, what's one? Yep. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to show for the immediate functions. They're really simple, really easy to use, um, but they're nice to have if you do run redundant or reports on a regular basis, especially daily or even multiple times a day, because instead of you having to go say, okay, I want to query dates or data from, you know, the last two hours and the next time from the last three hours or, you know, the next day, you don't have to go manually type it in. You can just have this update every time if you just hit F9. Um, so let's move on to monthly, moving a little quick, but that's okay. If you have questions, pop them up in the chat. Um, I'll also look to get this up on YouTube, so throw things in the comments. Okay, so finish this. We're gonna look at month reporting because really, you know, whether you're, whenever you get out, if I don't know if you're in school now or if you're already in business, but once you get out into any business in any industry, you're gonna care about monthly reporting. If I can type and talk at the same time, month start, month end, and then we'll just use today as a, a visual helper cell. Um, so month reporting is a little different than today because there's not necessarily a specific functionality in Excel that gives you it. There kind of is, so we have to play with it a bit. Um, so again, just as a reference, you can do all this in line, but I'm going to put today down here, and we'll format that to show it. Custom bottom here, minute. So we'll go down to the minute and then we'll actually change that to 6 a.m. Because for month monthly reporting, it's usually done by accountants. They like the 6 a.m. So for the month start, Excel does have a monthly function that is called EO month. So if you type EO month and hit tab, actually let me back up. So you can see this returns the serial number of the last day of the month before or after a specified number of months. That might sound a little confusing, but all it's really asking for is you give it a start date wherever you want to start, and then you're going to offset it by some number of months. So we're going to use our start date as today. I'm just going to reference cell B3. And since we want the start of the month, which or the end of the previous month with this function, we're going to do negative one for months. That should give us June 31st, 2018 at 6 a.m. If I remember put this as a date yep. and oh also in dates I don't typically like to use the generic date time I like to use military time and, oh that's right sorry it does it doesn't incorporate the plus 0.25 so but either way for month end reporting you don't want it to start at the end of last month you want it to start at the start of this month right simple enough so we can just do simple addition so we can do plus one and since we want it to be 6 a.m 0.25 boom there you go and for your month end it is pretty much the same thing so i'm just going to drag and drop this we'll have to change that cell reference back to b3 but instead of minus one we're just going to do zero because we want it to be the end of this current month. And that's it. So that gives us a nice July 1st at 6 a.m. to August 1st at 6 a.m. And the nice thing about this is if you do run monthly reports, I know a lot of people would go back in and hard code these and every month they would change it manually themselves. But that's kind of a waste of time and not really utilizing Excel in its full, for, in its full functionality. Um, so this will actually update correctly every single time assuming you're running your date your today date is during the month you want it um, which isn't always the case but let's see so let's say if you were running this in August uh, we'll just hard code this one to, for time's sake uh, 8 slash 1 slash 2018 let's make that let's say you, you know you were on vacation you didn't get to it till August 7th for your month end reports and we'll do 6 a.m. Now, if we refresh these, well, that's offsets. That doesn't really do us any good. So what you could do here, since you know you're not going to be reporting that same month, just offset everything by an additional one. 
So instead of negative one to zero, it goes negative two to zero. Works just fine. And the way to test this, uh, if you're saying, well, how do I know it's gonna scale over years? Just play around with it. Let's say, let's do something crazy. Let's do, let's just do June 4th, or March 4th, and then we'll do the year 2055. Is it gonna work? Yes. So if you were doing month end reporting on March 4th, uh, March 4th in 2055, this would still function. As long as you keep it in the 1900 to 10,000 time range, everything should be fine. Um, let's actually see if we can actually break it. 10,000, throw on another zero. Let's see what we get. There you go. See, if you go outside the time range, you get an error in the value because uh, time no longer exists in that point, uh, at that point in Excel's eyes. So let me change that back for a little, make it a little nicer, 2018, and then F9. Why did that change? There we go. And A plus and F9. There we go, we're back to it. So that's just a little easy way to set things up. It's super simple. Like I said, there's your code that does all of it. And, uh, you know, we're not really going to do anything with this in this tutorial. I'm just showing you the time functionality in a normal business environment. You would have uh, a third party application or an Excel add in that would query your data and would ask for time dates. Well, when you do that, you could just reference these cells. So your queries are automatically updating each time. That's sort of the scope of it. All right, quick drink of water, and then we'll move on to our calendar year reporting. And switch this. Okay. Sorry, moving some things around. Okay, copy this over okay so calendar year is just another it's the next logical step it's a much wider range um, but it, it's still relatively simple to do because at least in most of the world the date set January 1 uh, if you start talking about the Chinese New Year that's a little different but we might act the the skills I'll teach you on the next tab for fiscal year would probably apply to that if you needed a different date um, so this is where I'm going to introduce you to something called concatenation and concatenation is a fancy word for joining two things. It sounds scary, it sounds weird, it's really simple. Concatenation, if I can spell. There we go. That's it. And really, all it is is an ampersand or the and sign. It just joins two things of text that you specify in code together. So, um, Looking at it within the context of year of yearly reporting for the calendar year, we know that our year is always going to start on January 1 in this context. But we want this every year. We don't want to have to go back and change the time manually. So what we can do is equals, we're going to use a string here. So the string will output, if you're not familiar, really any anything you put in. It's not going to format it all. It's not going to try to look at it as anything other than what you say. So we're going to do 1, 1, and then we're going to do the year of today. I'm just going to put today in there. You can do it all in line. I've been using these helper cells just to make it more visible to you guys. So if you wanted to change this up, you could, instead of having today inside the year, you could just reference cell B3. It does the same thing. So that outputs nicely. Um, then... For our year end, we're going to do the same thing with string of one slash one. Uh, make sure you put the second slash in there. And also, since it is a string, if you put a space, I'll do it in the other one. It'll be quicker. If you do put a space, it's going to put that space in there. So keep that in mind if you are formatting like uh, strings that contain words and you need a space between them if you're passing a value to the end of it. Otherwise, they'll smush together. So just something to be mindful of. Um, so there's your start, and really I'm just going to copy, I'm going to lock down that cell, so I don't have to retype it, 
copy that there. Uh, and for year end, all we really want to do is take a plus one at the end of that. There you go. And if you wanted that to be a little more readable, uh, put parentheses around it in case someone else comes in and hasn't used this before. Boom. Um, now, what I will say is uh, if you look at today, so if you look up at the, um, let me make sure my mouse capture is on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, we're good. Uh, if you look up at this uh, number area, when I look at today, it's a date. When I look at the year start and year end, it's changed to a general. And the reason for that is Excel, when you concatenate things with, you know, you're mashing data types, you're putting a date along with a string. It doesn't really know what to make of that. So this may not be the best practice across the industry, but it's how I do it. Um, uh, I use what are referred to as helper cells um, to make it more usable or make it usable as a reference. Because if you try and reference that in a third party application, the third party app or the add in might not know how to handle that as a date, so it's going to spit out an error. So I'm going to use something called date value, which will convert uh, a date text into a numeric value. And you can see it gave us 43101, and we're going to scale that. Just drag that down to there. That gives us 43, 466. Um, and then all you have to really do is right click, format the cells. I'm going to go to the dates and we'll go down to military time. Boom. Now these are actual date cells. You could use them as references. They're not going to throw errors. And again, we'll do a test of, you know, hard code this and delete today. Let's do. Let's look at the calendar year for 8 slash 8 slash 1776. Why not? Hit F9. Oh, what happened here? Year B3. Oh, I'm an idiot. I thought I meant to hit 1990 or 1976. Remember, that's why you. That's okay. So there we go. So even going backwards in time, we get the correct year. Um, and again, if you wanted to offset this, if you were looking, doing year end reporting after January 1, you could just use offsets of minus one and minus two. So pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, and let's make sure it scales going forward as well. Boom, good. All right, so now that brings us to the last thing that I have, which is uh, fiscal year reporting. And where'd my mouse go? Okay, so uh, while I'm typing this up, I'll just explain. If you guys aren't familiar, a lot of businesses don't do their don't consider their years to be their business year to be from January one to January one of the next year. Um, it, it really depends on the specific industry or business of how they're set up, um, but a lot of them will use the first of a month of a different month in in the year. So, for example, we're gonna say that. This imaginary company's fiscal year starts on August 1 every year. Why not? It, it really can be anything. It's really just industry specific. Um, if there are major events that affect every company in that industry, it could be any number of things. So we could use the concatenation again and most likely get it to work, but I wanted to introduce you guys to if then statements. This is really just an excuse um, to show you guys if thens because uh, it's this is a really simple context to use it in but as we go forward I'm gonna start getting into VBA and more coding uh, languages it's gonna be really good if you don't have the understanding of those to know how they work and instead of learning them in the coding environment learning them in the Excel end user space it makes it much easier to understand so uh, for a fiscal oops, sorry okay so again we're gonna use the little visual helper cell of today that got 721 2018 um, to get an if statement just types equal an if and what this does is checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if that condition is true and another value if it's false so essentially the way to speak through it when you're getting used to it is if this is true output this if it's false output this um, so what we're gonna do in this context is use our date, but it's not gonna be as simple 
as you know just using January 1. So what we can use is something called, similar to how we use the year function on the previous page, we could use the month function. And it's just gonna give us the serial number of a reference date. And we're gonna put B3 there. Um, and actually, before we actually type that out, I'll show you equals month of that. And it gives us seven. The reason I wanted to show you that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was a quick way to do that, but that's fine. Um, current year. This one is actually next year. Okay. So the way to think about it with fiscal years uh, is this. Everything after August 1st on any given year. So we'll... You know, here's 2018. Going into next year, 2019. Everything between the start of your fiscal year uh, start date and the end of the calendar year is going to be the same current year that you're in. Everything before that is going to be the next year. So I just wanted to draw that out visually. It's in case it got a little confusing. So we're going to use that as our current month as sort of a sort in our if statement. So we're going to do if our month of our current day uh, is greater than or equal to 8, then we know that we're going to use the concatenation again, that the start date should be 8 slash 1 slash and the year of uh, today Otherwise, if that's false, let me scroll this over. Blow that up. Oh yeah. Actually. Something went wrong on my other screen. Hold on. Bear with me for just one second. Clear. There we go. Oh, I did not escape out of that. Okay, that's fine. We'll just retype real quick. So, if month of today's date uh, is greater than or equal to 8, then we output the concatenated string date of 8 slash 1 and the year of today's date. And by the way, all of these logic values are separated by commas. So your logic test, we are currently highlighted in value if true. We hit the other comma, we get our value if false. So um, if that value is false, we want it to output the uh, 8 slash 1 and the year of today minus 1. As a typo, but that's too many parentheses. Auto fix it for me. So, since, and the reason I chose August is because it's actually coming up. Uh, so we are in July. So since the month of today's date, which is seven, is not greater than or equal to eight, then we know that our fiscal year was started last August. So it defaults to eight slash one. Uh, then the current year minus one. If I changed this to nine slash one 2018, and we change that. Whoa, what did happen? There we go. Then we know that the fiscal year we're only we would only be a month into it and it would be 8 1 2018. So we're back to that. Now what we really need is our month end, which is pretty much the same thing we just did, except you're just changing your uh, additions. And to make it simpler, I'm just going to copy that, paste it there. Oh, uh, another little tip to lock down your cells before you copy paste. You do that with the money sign. I'm sure most of you probably know that, but just in case, I'll say it. That, that, boom, copy, paste. Now all we have to change is, um, so now we know if uh, we are greater than or equal to eight, our fiscal year will end next calendar year. 
So I'm going to do a plus one. And if it uh, is not true, then we know it just needs to be this calendar year because it's coming up. So based off of July 21st, since that uh, month is seven, which is not greater than or equal to eight, it gives us our 8 one 2017 to 8 one 2018 Again, as a test, we will do, uh, let's see, February 4th, 2099. Oh, yeah. There we go, 8-1-2098 to 8-1-2099. So that's really all I had to show you guys. Um, like I said, I wanted to keep this short and simple. Um, it's nothing really major from a, a coding standpoint, but one, it was my first stream, so I wanted to get some of the kinks worked out. And two, this is just sort of a foray into automated reporting. I do that professionally and in my free time, I really enjoy it and I really like teaching it to other people. So I'm hoping that as I build more videos, we can get more people involved. Uh, if there's things you want to see, let me know. Uh, if there's things I did really well, let me know. If there's things I did wrong, call me on them so we can get them corrected. I don't want to teach you incorrect things. Or even if there's a better way to do it. Like I said uh, on the calendar year, I'm using helper cells. That's not the best way to do things. I'm wondering if there is a way to do them in line. I just never needed to use it. So I'm really excited about coming up with more videos for you. Um, I will try and get this posted up to YouTube. Uh, I'll try and uh, I'm, I'm gonna the next thing I'm gonna get into is VBA, which is Visual Basic for Applications. Which oh man, my things. All right, under our developer, it's Visual Basic. This is where you can add in actual code uh, in a script in the sort of integrated scripting environment that's built into Excel, uh, and you can do a lot of powerful stuff with it. That's where I'm going next. Uh, I don't know when the next stream will be. I'm hoping two to three weeks, but I'm moving uh, in this coming week. So I'm going to have to get internet set up. It's going to be a whole thing. Uh, but either way, I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks for tuning in, uh, and I'll see you next time.